everyone and welcome to this oil painting and chill session of this painting entitled Lost at Sea. I hope you're doing super well and are having a wonderful week. And thank you so much for your amazing comments on my last video and also I hope you're all keeping safe during this very difficult time. Now in this video I thought I'd talk about how I am actually changing my painting setup and how I managed to acquire a table easel. Now as you can see I normally paint on this big easel here but uh, I have been thinking for a long time I really need one of those table easels where you can put on a table quite obviously and then you can have your palette in the frame and so you could sort of like paint and then record at the same time so it's really useful and then I kind of forgot about it however I just happened to be uh, in the works which is if you are in England you will know this store it's like one of those stores that basically is kind of like a mishmash of everything all combined into one store like I remember when I started oil painting it was the very first place that I went into just on a whim and it's basically one of those places where you just end up there and you don't plan to go there but just somehow you're sort of like that looks kind of weird or that looks quite interesting or that looks massively like reduced why is it so reduced and then you go in and then you just end up finding something quite unique or something that you've needed for ages um, and it's kind of one of those places where all of their stuff is kind of like jumbled up a bit <laughs> like you have to like rummage around and they've got the weirdest combination of things you're like in one corner you'll find mystery a bunch of like really old mystery novels then you might find some like encyclopedias and then a massive jigsaw then some diy stuff and then randomly they have these little corners or sections of painting things but they have actual quite specialist painting things like they do in fact have oil paints but they also have some really interesting and Quite amazing canvases some of them are huge and the first time when I when I started oil painting I found myself in there and on the floor I remember there was this little set of oil paints that of course they were not great quality but they were still uh, something that I thought well maybe I'll just give it a go you know it's like not very much money and all that so I happened to be in there and I saw this desk easel and I wouldn't say it was massively reduced but it was to the point where I thought, well, even if it turns out to be rubbish, it's not like I've wasted loads of money on it. Anyway, it's turned out to be really good. It's a really nice one. It's a little bit clunky. So when I actually um, fold it back, it sort of almost like collapses with a big bang. At least it has done a couple of times. <laughs> and um, I was really worried that um, because some of the boxes where the table easels were in, a lot of them were like ripped or like stepped on or something. <laughs> they looked like they'd been stamped on some of them. And some of the easels that they had, um, which, I mean, the canvases, sorry, some of the canvases that they had, which looked absolutely amazing, uh, were, in fact, on closer inspection, had marks all over them, or, like, some of the packaging had been ripped, which is really strange. But then there were other ones that were, like, perfect, and, in, like, perfect packaging, and looked great. So I, it was quite odd. Uh, but So I was thinking it is a bit of a gamble, because I could buy this, and then it may be like smashed inside and I even asked the assistant if she could open it for me and she was like no which I thought was quite strange but then she was also super helpful because she opened another one and showed me and that was perfectly intact although it didn't really help me because I was kind of like okay that looks great but then this one could be smashed but anyway <laughs> so I just got lucky and I managed to get my nice table easel and it seems to be working for me great so yeah, so next week, hopefully, I will have a time lapse which will include some paint mixing and things. And this video, um, this video, this painting, <laughs> this painting is uh, all about this little story that I came up with, which was um, about ambition. And in the story, the little mouse uh, keeps saying to all its friends, you know, mice are so, they have such a bad rap. People just think that all they do is go around and steal you know, food crumbs and, uh, you know, cause havoc in people's houses and they're like pests and people don't think they can do anything else. And this mouse says, I'm going to be like a voyager. I'm going to voyage across the seas. I'm going to be an adventurer. I'm going to discover new worlds. And of course, uh, all his mouse friends think it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I assume mice have friends. I mean, <laughs> they're quite often together. So, uh, you know, some are family, some are friends. And, um, these mice friends, they say, look, you're just being silly, you can't do anything, you're just a mouse, and, you know, stick to what you know, which is 
getting some cheese or whatever <laughs> and uh, and getting your food but no this mouse thinks I don't want to be seen that way I want to you know I have a greatly intelligent mice mouse I'm able to break into people's houses unseen and take things I can do more with my life rather than just you know scurry around people's cupboards and so it decides one day to have a voyage on the high seas and so its friends come to see it off and it takes its little teacup which has decided it's going to be its uh, method of transport and it goes ahead on this you know big amazing vast sea with a little spoon to row itself um however Although it sounds like a great idea, uh, this mouse finds that due to bad weather, the more it sort of sails along, the more trouble it starts to get into. And it starts to think to itself, hang on, I've actually made a big mistake here and I shouldn't have gone this far and tries to turn back. But by that point, um, it's sort of being surrounded by various creatures in the sea. And so it realises it actually has to complete its journey and it can't go back. And it also parallels, I suppose, with this theme of trying things and ambition and sort of trying things that you always um that you sorry rather you think you can do and everyone tells you well you shouldn't do it but even then you still go ahead and you try your best and sometimes in an adventure situation or doing something that requires a great amount of skill or a great amount of ambition perhaps it's something very risky it could be something like art and then you get to a point where you're sort of like, actually, I'm too scared now. I'd really rather just go back and do what everyone else does. But by that time, it's actually too late. So uh, I do actually think that it's quite similar to being an artist because uh, there are times when you probably do have um, moments. Many artists I've spoken to have moments where they just think, is this ever going to, is there ever going to be an end? Whether it be a piece of work or a gallery or, you know, displaying their work or even just the daily going through the daily motions of being an artist and trying to survive uh, and so yeah so those are the themes that I thought about when I was painting this and I do hope you like it and I was working on a with Gamden oil paints uh, again as I mentioned as I mentioned every video and I also want to do just sort of a little shout out to all the oil painters on YouTube because had I not watched YouTube videos and experienced other people's art on YouTube who create, you know, these beautiful oil paintings, I would never have discovered Gamblin because even though Gamblin is a very popular paint in the UK, um, it's not really known that much in the UK. I'd say there are other brands that are more, not necessarily popular, but more well known. And I wouldn't have gone around to seek it out or anything. But thanks to YouTube, I was able to hear about this paint brand and because they're so wonderful, like they don't have a, not only is the actual paint itself so wonderful in that it's just incredible in terms of its, particularly their translucent, trans, uh, transparent or semi-transparent paints, I find them so, they work so well for fantasy art, water, skies, actually anything really, and they're so versatile, but also they have such a low odour, I mean, the, the, the standard of their paints is so high, and I believe actually that they're now like the number one bought paint in the US, which I think is truly amazing, because when I started using them, I don't think they had that status, so I think now that's just absolutely incredible, and, and their mediums are brilliant. I've I don't think I've ever used a product by Gamblin that I thought was terrible or didn't, you know, there are some products that they do that work better for me than others, but I've never actually used a product that has been like really dud or anything. So there are other amazing oil painting brands, don't get me wrong, but I just, I'm so grateful to have learnt about them. So big shout out to all YouTubers who paint with oils and um, yeah, I just hope that I am able to spread the joy about gambling because I think they're not really known as much in the UK and I just think they're amazing. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this time lapse and I will see you at the end of the video.
I started this painting with a rough sketch in blue polychromos pencil and then I'm going in with a very dark first layer of paint. So this is the very first layer and then once it's dried I will then go in with a much lighter layer of paint and this is to sort of build up the fur texture. It's also a really great way to create depth. And with the actual composition, the fish were a last minute addition. I wasn't going to put them in. I had in my mind this idea of a mouse in a cup sailing around with a spoon as its uh, paddle. And that was pretty much it. And the moon as well, uh, with this crescent moon, I just sort of added that in at the end. And I'm trying to build up the colour here, but there wasn't much brown in the surface of this mouse. I used a copyright free image to create the mouse because I really don't know that well the structure of hamsters and mice. I'm much more accustomed to painting cats and uh, sort of dogs sometimes, so not so much these types of creatures. And I'm using very small a very small brush here, and the medium at this point is very fluid. But because these areas are opaque. I didn't feel the need to thin down the paint too much. I just was working in and trying to be as accurate as possible. I actually posted a preliminary image of this first layer on my Instagram and it was quite funny because I was so scared to post it because my paintings always look really bad in the initial layer. But as you can see now, it's all transformed. It started to look a lot better because I've built up the layers in the uh, mouse and I've obviously it started to dry. Now this medium that I'm using is by Gamblin, but it's a definitely not a super fast drying medium. It's not like their Galkit, which dries really fast. This is a slightly slower drying one. So the paint on the water is not actually completely dry. I'd say it was sort of semi-dry, but I was still working up the colour because I really wanted to just continue painting. So you can do that you don't actually have to wait for each layer to dry completely i felt that as soon as it was relatively dry so that it was a, not so completely liquidy i was able to work up and build up the color i do that quite often because sometimes these mediums take up to even two days to start to dry and i just don't have the time to wait and as you can see i'm using lots of different tones of green uh, I know that uh, seas and things are often blue, but I like to work in the greens there. There was some blue at the sides, but I actually wanted to make it a lot greener, but it didn't really end up getting around to doing it. So here we go after a week. This was the finished painting. And as you can see, it is a vertical video. I do apologize for this, but I took it um, vertically. I have no idea why, just to have a look at the details. And for some reason, I forgot to flip my camera around, which was super smart. But I hope you can see the details and the texture that I worked up on this painting. I do hope you liked the concept and thank you so much for watching. <laughs>